something to say, something to say. Hey everybody, our house 21 here, and it's time for another experiment. Now, as you see in front of you, I've got my two favorite creatures, uh, my new model, which I still haven't decided on a name for, so if you guys got any suggestions, feel free to chime in, and good old Slate. Now, if you've been watching my previous videos, you've probably heard me talk about or kind of complain about the fact that, you know, I believe that for my high speed runs with Slate here, I'm actually getting a traction limit. So I believe that in order to get to speed over the mid 70s, I have a, an overall traction problem because aerodynamically, um, this car, you know, at speed should be experiencing somewhere between three and five pounds of, uh, between three and five pounds of drag. Uh, because of the weight of the vehicle, the maximum amount of power I think that I can put down to the ground is somewhere between three to five pounds. So I believe that the 75 mile per hour uh, boasted or claimed speed from Traxxas for the Wrestler VXL is actually really more of a limit of the weight of the car and how much power it can put down to the ground, not of, of the power system. So that's leading me to a question of really how much force can I put down to the ground with this car? So it occurred to me the easiest way to test that would be to go to my local sporting goods store and pick up a fish scale. This guy right here is a digital uh, quote unquote high precision fish scale. So turn this guy on and you see I get my I get weight in pounds and ounces. What does a fish scale have to do with how much traction? Easy. I need to see how much force I'm able to put down to the rear wheels. So I could take my little fish scale here, hook it up to my traction bar, light off the throttle, and see what happens. The weight that registers on the scale is actually a direct measurement of the amount of force I'm able to get down to the wheels. Now this will allow me to do two measurements. It give me a measurement of the coefficient of static friction and a coefficient of dynamic friction. So basically how much or how hard will the car pull before the wheels start to spin? And then once the wheels are spinning, how hard will it pull? That's two very critical pieces of information that will tell me, you know, how much power can I put to the ground with a given weight? How much weight do I know? Or how much weight do I have? That's easy too. Once again, the fish scale. I can take the measurement of the weight at each axle, or more precisely at each corner, add those together, and that should be the total vehicle weight. I compare that to the vehicle weight I get when I just measure it like this, like a fish, and all the numbers should check. And since I have two vehicles, I might as well reproduce everything with the new guy over here as well. That's going to give me a real world measurement of how much power can I put to the ground. That will allow me to go back and check the aerodynamic models that I have and see at speed what speed gives me to me drag that is the equivalent to the amount of power I'm able to put to the ground. That determines the top speed of the vehicle. So what do I do or for my goal for getting slayed here to 100 miles an hour? Because if at a vehicle weight of about six pounds, I'm running out of juice, you know, what are the options? Well, there's really only two options. One is I could try to come up with some sort of aerodynamic solution, but I've already sat down and I've gone through all the math. I've mentioned that I'm actually by trade an aerospace engineer. So I went through the numbers a couple of times and realistically, even with a 12 inch wide wing on this car, the most downforce I could realistically generate is somewhere between one to one and a half pounds which isn't anything to sneeze at, but in order to get to 100, I'm gonna have to you know, figure out how to put another like two to, two to four pounds of weight on the rear axle. The only way to do that really is to add weight. Now that hurts my head, <laughs> it really does. You know, because you know, for acceleration purposes, you know, F equals MA, you want the vehicle lighter. However, for 
top speed, you don't really care so much about acceleration. It's all about how much power can you get to the ground. The only way to get power to the ground is by having stickier tires or by having more weight on the ground. And if I can't do it, if I can't get more weight on the ground aerodynamically, that means I have to do it physically. So that means I'm probably going to have to ballast up the car. So I think and I've alluded to this back in the RC Physics 3 video, uh, the power versus, well, force versus power. You know, the Mama Monster guys have an inherent advantage, advantage because they're carrying at least another two pounds of weight over what the 3S guys like myself are. So the easiest starting point is to add another two pounds to the car and see if, we'll see how it performs. See if I'm on the right track. So it's going to be a balancing act. I'm going to have to add that weight in such a way that it doesn't offset the balance of the car. But I think that it also is going to be an interesting thing to also work with this car in parallel, which essentially has the same power system, just with a different layout. Um, four wheel drive adds a little bit more mechanical loss. However, you know, it's, I've, I've already benchmarked it and it's actually not that much more draggy. So this car has an inherent advantage because you're putting the weight down to the front axle and the rear axles. So once I do my little, um, once I do my fish scale test, I should be able to put twice as much power to the ground as this car because I'm actually pulling with two axles. So I'm gonna change out. Well, I'm actually gonna go ahead and do a run with these, um, the Proline uh, Dirt Hall tires just to compare, see how they do versus my Jayco foams. But as you guys have seen from the hot glue video, these are my pristine speed tires. I also have a set of grunge tires that I pieced with through the hot glue and the actual friction surface is untouched. So I'll make sure I use two good rear tires for that test. Um, and that they should be fine to give me a benchmark. So after I go ahead and do the measurements, I'll add that to the end of this video and we'll see how it did. So I crunched the numbers and I was a little bit surprised by the results. So even though these Jayco foams are very different construction tire than these Dirt Hawks, um, you know, I actually found that the, once I adjusted for the different weights of the tires and uh, the different weights over the axle, they had virtually the same coefficient of friction, um, only off by a couple percent. So let's go to the numbers here. Slate with the Dirt Hawks, was able to pull, uh, at, was able to have a maximum pull force of about four pounds and 14 ounces. But the vehicle weight, well, the weight over the rear axle was three pounds and three ounces. And that gives me a coefficient of friction of 1.52. Now, uh, just to refresh people's memories, the coefficient of friction is a measure of how much force you can get out of the wheel versus the amount of weight that's applied to it. So, just by measuring that pull force and then dividing by the weight over the axle. In the case of the four wheel drive cars, the full vehicle weight, you're able to get a number. Now, interesting thing, you see here with Jayco Foams, again, I have four pounds, eight ounces divided by three pounds. That's because the two tires over the rear axle were actually three pounds lighter. So when you adjust it, I got 1.52. But when I put on the slash, the results changed a little bit. So I was able to get a maximum pull force of about seven pounds, seven ounces. So seven and a half pounds with the slash with the dirt hogs on it. When I switched to the Jayco foams, you know, I was only able to get, you know, just shy of seven pounds, so six pounds and 13 ounces. But, you know, the weight of the vehicle now was off by six ounces. So that ended up giving me a coefficient of friction of 1.29 and 1.27. So why is the coefficient of friction higher over here than it is over here? 
And I think that's actually because the numbers were a little bit deceptive. Uh, basically, it's all about weight transfer. If you look at the wrestler here, the way I did my experiment, you had my little pull bar here attached to the wheelie bar. The wheelie bar is actually higher on the vehicle than the axle. So I think what actually happened is when the wrestler started to pull, it actually pulled the car down. That actually transfers weight from the front of the car to the rear of the car. And it doesn't take a whole lot with a light vehicle to, to really change the numbers quite a bit. So essentially a car squatted, put more weight on the rear of the car, and that gave me an effective higher coefficient of friction. So it really just gamed the numbers a little bit. Uh, in the slash, that didn't happen because I was pulling with all four tires equally and um, I was using a slipper clutch as opposed to a center differential. So the car was not able to send torque to the wheels at different rates. So all four wheels got the same power, therefore we have a more uniform number. So I think that this 1.2 number for both cases is closer to reality. But what that says for the high speed runs now is that it's just, the story is becoming very clear. The wrestlers have a traction limit. And with, you know, four, well, let's go back here. With just between four and five pounds of, of force available, you know, to drive the wheels, you know, that's going to limit the aerodynamic drag. So uh, we... I still have to go back and actually uh, do GPS numbers to measure the current draw to convert that over into actual uh, power numbers or just the aerodynamic drag numbers. But I'm thinking that, you know, I mean, my, my rough numbers tell me that the aero drag at about 70 to 80 miles an hour is somewhere in the order of about four pounds. So I think that that is why Traxxas made the 75 mile an hour uh, high speed flame on the wrestlers with the 3S lipo packs. It's just a weight issue. So going forward for a future, what does that mean for Slade here? Well, like I mentioned before, if it's just an issue of weight, then I can combat the traction problem by just adding more ballast to the car, weighing it down some more. More weight over the axles equals more traction. So with that, I should be able to push through the 80 mile per hour barrier and potentially get all the way up to 100. You know, because it's, um, wrestlers have been demonstrated to be able to go 100, you know, thanks to all the success lifeboat guys. So all things being equal, if the motor and power system can, can provide the power, which I don't think is an issue, then it's just an issue of traction. So, I think that from now on, I'm going to actually pursue a parallel course. So I'm going to be running the Slash and the Rustler, you know, since they have the same power system and, you know, see where the two differ and where the two are uh, similar. And I think that's going to be very interesting for me. And as always, I'll keep you guys posted. Our House 21 signing off. And guys, remember, fly, fix, fly. Go out there, break it, fix it, do it all over again. And we'll see you next time.